With news developing that Luis Enrique is set to take charge in the City of Love after they fumbled the bag with Nigelsman and Thiago Motta, he's charged with not only taking care of the team, but pleasing some of the most demanding and unforgiving fans in the world. Like these lot recently, or the ultras at least, were booing their own team in their title celebrations. Winning League On just isn't acceptable anymore for this fan base. That's not going to cut it. In three years, PSG have ran through four managers. This club wouldn't know consistency if it punched them in the face. The Parisians have crashed out of the Champions League early again, just sold Messi to Inter Miami, dealing with Mbappe contract dramas and even Neymar's looking to leave. Luis, my guy, what have you gotten yourself into here? Can the Spanish tactician steer the team away from a legacy of failure, deliver success and guide them into a new era? Well, we're gonna have to find out. You already know how we roll over here on this channel. We have a FIFA 24 mod installed. All the newly released threads are in game and some of the biggest transfers of the summer so far have already happened like Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid and Kunku to Chelsea, Benzema and Kante both off to Saudi Arabia and the most important of them all the GOAT himself Lionel Messi he's out here living life in Miami these days he's off to the MLS he's just signed the contract of a lifetime with David Beckham it really is the life after Messi challenge and soon if the club ain't careful it's gonna be the life after Mbappe challenge the FIFA cover star himself PSG's gold boy. There's a bunch of drama going on right now. He doesn't want to renew his contract. He's got one year left. He's announced he doesn't want to stay in the French capital. We're just going to let him go for free. What's going to happen in real life? It's all up in the air. One thing we do know is that he won't be at PSG for much longer. And of course, this mod allows us to start in the brand new season. We're in the 23-24 era right now. We've been transported to July 2023 and Luis Enrique currently has an 113 million pound transfer budget to work with. Imagine losing Eminem, one of the most dangerous trios in world football, and being still expected to win a treble. Yep, that's the current situation here in Paris, as we're transforming the PSG default into a new era, new formation, a new system, a 3-4-1-2 or a 3-4-3. This is how we're rolling moving forward, and the tactics are as follows. We want them to press after possession loss, slow build up in attack. We're playing with a Spanish tiki-taka possession football flair about them, and he's going to bring that Spanish influence to the team. Team, don't you worry. Now it's a facet of the game that PSG haven't really been paying attention to in recent years and that's their youth academy. They've produced some absolute gems over the years and some of them have been wrongfully let go. We don't want that happening here as the homegrown talent at the club right now, Arnaud Besnard. He's a camp slash center forward, French 17 year old and has a potential of 79 to 94. The high attacking work rate, 5 foot 11. He has 98 aggression and 99 strength. I don't care if he's a teenager, we need that kind of mentality in the first team. We can't let this type of talent slip through the cracks as the attacking minded center forward. The next jewel in this Parisian crown as we stick him straight on a development plan, he could be the key for the future. There are even more problems bubbling under the surface, so let's see what we can fix in this upcoming summer window. Now some of the first actions we had to take as new boss of PSG, Luis Enrique, he's got to make official some of the deals that have actually gone down in real life. Fabrizio Romano's given it the here we go. Chelsea lost out on the race to sign this guy. It's the Uruguayan CDM Ugarte from Sporting Lisbon. He'll be making his big European move as we agreed a deal with the Portuguese outfit. 30 million pounds. A potential new first team captain. You never know. He could be a dominant force in midfield for years to come and I think he's just a quality signing. The director of football really hit the nail on the head with that one and another move we've got to make official and permanent. Mirroring real life as Luis Enrique shakes the hands of Korean sensation Kangen Lee. He'll be departing Mallorca and joining joining us for 10.9 million pounds plus Julian Draxler headed the other way and now we're involving the former German wonder kid in the swap deal as Kangen Lee becomes our brand new number 36. Now they were the only official deals we had to give the green light to and they aren't done their summer business yet. I'm sure they're going to be splashing more cash in the upcoming weeks. As the club are bound to lose Sergio Ramos, we're going to have to bring in another new defender and in this three-man backline, we're bringing him back to the homeland. It's Lucas Hernandez, the centre-back French World Cup hero. He is injury prone, but we've managed to secure a deal 32.9 million pounds for a brand new starter. Arriving from Bayern Munich with a lot of top level European experience, he comes back to Ligue 1 in his prime at 27. Now that Hernandez deal is just heavily rumoured. He's been linked to the club just like this high profile player Bernardo Silva. He's fresh off winning the treble at Man City, but with a lack of first team game time, he's looking for moves abroad and has stated he's not interested in Saudi Arabia. He wants to stay in 
Europe who just don't have the funds to afford the offer, which is quite unlike PSG. We've just got to sell off a few first team assets. The first major departure of the window has happened. It's Leandro Paredes arriving from his loan spell back from Juventus. And we've sold him to the old lady again. He makes that loan deal permanent as he's off to Juve for £16.4 million. And this one's not actually a sale. It's the upcoming PSG prospect. The striker Husni will be departing the club on a two-year loan deal to Nantes to get some valuable league experience. Now, this export is going to be the catalyst of a flurry of loan deals happening in this window. We want to get some of our youngsters as much experience as possible and get game minutes under their belt before they return back. And this guy is no different as we're escorting Warren Zer Emery on a two-year loan deal to Pacos Ferreira out in Portugal. One of the most promising homegrown academy wonder kids will depart the club for the time being. And this guy, he's a failed wonder kid in many people's eyes. It's Renato Sanchez. The Portuguese box-to-box -box midfielder departs to Strasbourg on a two-year loan deal. And he's kind of in a situation where he's just not good enough for the team anymore. And an upcoming Spanish player, he's a wonder kid in his own right. A future first-team baller that Enrique can mould into an absolute superstar. And that is Ismael Garbi. He'll be going back to the homeland on a 12 month basis, Alaves will pick him up on a loan deal. And they just keep coming and coming. We are being as productive and efficient as possible in this 2023 summer window. And that means Eduard Michut, again, is off to another obscure Portuguese team. GD Chavez will sign him on a one year loan deal. And Serif Nahaga, who I'd never really heard of before, the 17 year old Portuguese left back, will be joining Gil Vicente. Trust me, just let Luis cook with these loan deals. Some of these guys could return back juiced up potential. There's a possibility that can experience the loan deal glitch. We've seen it before. You might as well call this the loan deals only challenge the rate this is going as we have more loan departures to acknowledge here. We've got a couple of French homegrown youngsters like Lu Lucas Lavalie. I don't know how to pronounce that. But he'll be venturing off to the south of England for 12 months. Portsmouth pick him up. And El Chadiali Bitashiabu is now packing his bags for Poland. I'm actually a major fan of this sale. I think the club fits him to a T because he'll be linking up with Diego Costa. Yet yeah, Sergio Ramos, we're going to have to say our goodbyes. It's farewells to the king. Only after two seasons in Paris, he is now being sold to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Only £8.4 million we have gotten out of the five-time Champions League winner. And the loan deal show house continues to take role as Kenny Nagata is now off to Preston in the championship for a 12-month spell. As a major money move is taking place, Luis Enrique is walking Neymar out of the PSG headquarters. We found a fellow suitor. He's departed the Parc de Prince and we've cashed in on the aging Brazilian as he will join Manchester United in the Prem for £76.3 million to become a Red Devil. We can't be having ballers at the club that seemingly publicly incriminate themselves cheating on their pregnant girlfriends. Bring that drama to the Premier League. We don't want it over here. He's just dropped an apology on Instagram and everything and he has no space in our future first team project. King, all I'm gonna say is just you do you. Ah, would you look what the cat dragged in it back from his loan spell at Galatasaray. Yeah, Mauro Icardi is just a parasite on this club. Just causing drama and mayhem everywhere he goes off the pitch. He's not worth it, so we'll be selling him off to the Premier League, I believe. No, Borussia Dortmund, £17 million. He's now joining BVB. I'm sure him and Wandanara will have a lovely time in Germany. Now, with all this extra cash flow and money we've been receiving from sales this summer, we've decided to bring in an extra striker to pair up with Mbappe in his last season at the club. We need a second choice option in up there. Thanks to us loaning out a bunch of the youth players up front we now have Eli Wahi who's been killing it for Montpellier in real life. And here's another player in that category he's just a rotational option a nice choice of depth to have. He's going to provide us with a bit more defensive reinforcement. He's also a player that's been killing it for his club domestically in France and that's RC Lens. They qualified, actually came through runners up in League 1. They've now got Champions League football in all of Europe but trying to poach their players right now. That includes the Austrian centre-back Danso, who actually has his game face scan. We've negotiated a cheeky little swap deal with Diallo headed the other way, plus £9.8 million. Pounds. With so much extra Neymar money lying around, you know what time it was. Bernardo Silva was a must. We needed to make a reply. We needed a response after losing such a big player, poster boy of the club. Not only that, Messi, but Mbappe coming up soon. Bernardo Silva has the potential to be a club legend. And he's got a point to prove here in France. He's probably going to be hated by all the Monaco fans. He knows he's going to be public enemy number one and for £62 million, pounds, we managed to haggle and negotiate Pep down to a reasonable fee as we seal the deal for the world class
class Portuguese playmaker. You just knew it was coming as well. Ex-Liverpool player Genie Wijnaldo moves return from his loan spell at Roma. He serves no real purpose in the team anymore. Hit in his early 30s and it's just a cursed age in career mode after arriving on a free, making the exit to Fenerbahce for £17 million pounds again. Despite the fact that we still have £50 million pounds in the bank, I want to save some of our signings and spending for Season 2. I think we've done enough for now. And knowing what PSG are like in the transfer period, it's not the market of 2022 by any means, but it's smart business nonetheless. Here is how our new first team starting 11 lines up. Vitinha, we're training to being a center attacking midfielder. Ugarte is being trained into being a CM. Hakimi slowly being converted into a right winger. And Kangan Lee, surprisingly, takes the starting spot and replaces Neymar. As homegrown talent one, the kid Besnard will be a super sub option in off the bench. We want this club to grow and evolve using a mix of experience, homegrown wonder kids and whatever else to win trophies, so let's get simulating. Look, if Enrique did this with his first season in charge, he'd probably be burnt at the stake by PSG fans. PSG have fumbled the league title to Olympic Lyon. Their bitter rivals came through with 96 points. Meanwhile, it's runners up for the Parisians, silver medal. 92 points with this team is still an impressive feat. In some other domestic competitions, we did manage to win the Trofeo de Champions 4-1 against Nantes and over in the Coupe Nationale it was a domestic double with the Cups a 1-0 win against Strasbourg in the Coupe Nationale final as we switch our attention towards the continental scene the Champions League where they came through second with 11 points in Group H they were then swiftly met by their demise and a round of 16 exit the lads were taught a lesson by Liverpool with a 7-2 aggregate loss getting embarrassed by Jurgen Klopp's men and I guess we replicated their round of 16 exit in real life as in the final it was Manchester City to win the Holy Grail. They've set the bar in the sky and Luis Enrique has to meet it at all costs. And here were our first team players that were our best performers. Of course, it's Mbappe. You all knew he'd be top goal scorer. 26 goals and 4 assists for the departing Ninja Turtle. A national hero with 30 goal contributions. Yeah, last month left remaining on his contract. No club have activated that gargantuan release clause. There you have it, his last stint at the club and a surprise performer, Lee Kangin Lee. The Korean star boy with 20 24 goals and 6 assists. I wasn't expecting that whatsoever, but he's way more versatile than I thought. Plus 4 growth to his overall and really impressed here in League 1 as Archa Fakimi. He's been playing 40 chess in real life. He's pulled off 15 goals and 15 assists as a right winger. And Bernardo Silva was just a hit from day dot. 15 goals and 33 assists for the Portuguese. In terms of a teenager making his debut, that's a breakout campaign. 6 goals and 41 appearances. Ugarte had a rough start to his life in Paris with only only 9 appearances, 1 goal and 1 assist. Marco Verratti is very much on the decline at 31. And the Italian stallion in between the sticks, Gianluigi Donnarumma, with 22 clean sheets, now sees himself as one of the best keepers in the world, 92 overall. And the most improved, our biggest grower out on loan, was in fact Ismail Garbi, the Spaniard, with a plus 7 upgrade to his overall, now standing at 73 out at Alaves. Taking everything into account, would that be an acceptable season for his first time in France? Luis Enrique, he's held it to a high regard. He got two trophies, finished second in the league, and he had to deal with a barrage of high-profile departures. In a hectic opening season one, life here at PSG is going to change forever as we know it. For the Spaniards' second campaign, we've been gifted with roughly £30 million. Yeah, this realism mod it takes no prisoners. It is absolutely brutal in the financial department. We should have probably spent that £50 million when we had the chance. Just in case you were curious to where Mbappe ended, it up yeah he's a free agent for how long knowing this game and all of our experiments in the past he's probably set to be a free agent for the rest of his life but we'll keep you guys in the loop if any news comes through we've got a trio of minor deals to launch season two's transfer window a couple of them are loans one of them's a little sale and we've got the big man center back he's still too young to be a first team starter it's a bitchy abu he'll now be joining the canaries at norwich city on a two-year loan other minor movements include cardi now joining Alger on a one-year loan and Juan Bernat will be sold out to Las Palmas for 5.3 million pounds and we need all the money we can get. With Kylian Mbappe leaving the Parc des Princes it left an Mbappe-sized hole in our front line. It was only obvious that we needed to invest in a striker and with the limited funds we had we have gone after one of Ligue 1's best goal scorers. It is Luis Appenda, another recruit from RC Lens. But they have so many hidden gems in their ranks we have cherry-picked and the Belgian goal-getter is one of them. We had to whip up yet another classic BCHD swap deal and that included Dina and Bimbe. Player plus cash
cash deal plus 15.6 million pounds. Considering our bitter rivals beat us to the league title by four points last season, Olympic Lyon, we've got to do everything in our power to try and limit their success, stop them from winning the title again. We're negotiating with the enemy right now as we've brought in a backup right winger for Hakimi. It is Bradley Barcola, another one of their rising youth talents from their youth academy who was just burst onto the scene, had a really decent campaign in real life. And we're engaging in another swap deal. It's nine million pounds plus Timothy Pimpembe. We don't really use wing backs in our formation anymore, so he really serves no use. We give the 21 year old showing great potential the green light as he switches allegiances, can play pretty much anywhere on the right and serve as a backup striker. Now I know a vocal minority and a small subsection of you guys, you know, they're not real big fans of the swap deals and all the trade offers that we pull off. With these limited budgets, with small funds, we gotta accomplish deals by any means necessary. I know it's quite unrealistic, but it needs to be done. And after that minor spiel, we have the longest serving member at the club, Marco Verratti, who has been here for 10 plus seasons. He will now be departing. The Italian now spending the back end of his career in Spain, joining Atletico Madrid for just over 50 million pounds. Money is at a premium right now. I didn't expect to be saying that at PSG, but here we are. And Luis Enrique is offloading another wasted talent, a position that really isn't required anymore. It's a right back. Colin Dagba will be joining PSV for 5.1 million. This player sale is pretty minor, but like I said, every transfer counts right now, and it's been long overdue for Lavin Kurzavart to make his exit, as the former Monaco wonder kid from years gone by finally departs to Burnley for 3.55 million pounds. <laughs> Now, thanks to the Costa Rican legend, Kaylor Navas in between the sticks, who's pushing 40 and deteriorating at a rapid rate, we've got to go ahead and secure ourselves a new backup goalkeeper for Donnarumma, just in case. It's for emergency use only, backup team brigade duties, you know who it is. It's Ilian Meslier, arriving from Leeds United on a discounted fee for £18.5 million. Now, Dries Mertens, he is 37, the same exact age as Kaylor Navas, but you know what, he's a free agent, the Belgian. I always see him pop up in my career modes like just our scouts recommend him all the time And that's because he is a free agent just like Kylian Mbappe We're gonna bring him in just for the fun of it for a free transfer. It's no skin off my back We'll provide a little bit of wisdom in the locker room There was nothing much we could do in this economy with 25 million pounds to improve the squad So we just decided to focus on exports and that's exactly what we did with a quick little batch of loan players Let's keep it real. We're a work in progress. We're nowhere near the finished article yet Not not by a long shot, as none of our signings in this market have made it into our first team starting 11 besides Luis Appender up front with Wahi and converted Mukiele into a fully fledged centre back for another option in defence. Now can that size be able to juggle multiple competitions and compete up to PSG standards? We're gonna have to find out. We're touching base here in January, halfway through season 2. Just a few little minor deals to report on. We have got the youngster Spanish winger Ismail Garbi. All 5 foot 6 of him will be off to Atlanta. Eric Bilbao on a two-year loan spell. He just isn't quite ready yet for Enrique Ball. And Serif Nahaga, the teenage Portuguese left back, will be joining Levante on a one-year loan deal. I've seen dominant league performances in my time, but this one just takes my breath away. I'm lost for words here. Our boys, Enrique's lads, have made up for last season's disappointment, and they've walked away with the league. Completely unchallenged, finishing invincible Centurions 102 points, and the Parisians are back to being champions emphatically. I'm sure it tastes even sweeter knowing that Paris FC finished rock bottom. To get the season started on the right foot, they won the Trophée de Champions in a 5-4 penalties win against Olympic Lyon. The French treble, a domestic treble, I know it is literally the bare minimum expected by fans, but hey, we've gone and done it 4-0 convincing against Monaco in the big dance. However, the Champions League is a whole different ball game. They followed up their domestic performances, finishing a perfect record 18 points, six wins in the group stages, eventually knocking out Ajax in the round of 16, 4-0 in aggregate, to the quarterfinals where they got their revenge on Liverpool, showing them who's boss, knocking out the Reds 3-2 on aggregate, and then over in the semi-finals, they met their demise against the old lady Juventus, handling them a sucker punch with a 4-3 aggregate loss and denied them the chance to go to the final, Tottenham winning 2-0 against United in the Europa League final, and Wolverhampton Wanderers with a 3-2 win against Club Bruce. 
Rouge in the conference. But I preface that this team is still a work in progress. This is nowhere near the best PSG team on paper, yet they still walked away with a comprehensive domestic display. It's not that much of a challenge in the Farmers League, but you've still got to go out and do it as our top goal scorer who replaced Mbappe. It's the Belgian who knows this league all too well, Louis Appender with 32 goals and 3 assists. If that's not a hit signing, I don't know what is. He grew up plus 5, now standing at 85, 25 years of age. He was wearing goal scoring boots all season alongside his strike partner, Eli Wahi. And it just goes to show what buying league unexperience gets you. With 26 goals and 3 assists, he was his partner in crime up top. And this guy again, Kangan Lee. The Korean continues to amaze and one of 3 players to bag himself double figures in both departments at only 24. It proves that you don't need all these flashy players and superstar signings to get the results. But Akolo was a handy super sub in and off the bench with 6 goals and 17 appearances. And Renato Sanchez actually had a pretty decent, you know, impressive season out at Strasbourg as Marquinhos, the ball playing defender with 17 assists from centre back. Maybe I should give him back the captain's armband as our homegrown talent Arnaud Besnard. He came off the bench, newly converted striker with 2 goals and 1 assist. It's sad to see, but Manuel Ugarte is still struggling to find game time in the middle of the park, even with Verratti's departure, the year required only with 3 assists and 28 appearances. And in terms of our batch out on loan, the player with the most growth was actually Ismail Garbi, back in the homeland with a plus 5 to his overall. Some of those loan recruits returning are going to feel like brand new signings as our highest valued player, of course, has got to go to our Italian shot stopper. It's been a combination of smart recruitment, forcing the egos out the door, and Enrique Ball, which has just completely revolutionized this club, giving them a fresh new look. We've just got a team that clicks. We've put all the puzzle pieces together, and now it's time for a season three summer window where anything is possible. And I use that term very lightly because the board have gifted us with a measly 25 million pounds. Yes, believe your eyes, our transfer budget has been diminishing ever since we started. The Realism mod has given us no financial freedom whatsoever, and I just don't know how to feel about it. We have to launch this campaign though by saying goodbye to one of the club legend. I know he's kind of underrated here at the Parc des Princes. It's Kaylor Navas. Our former second choice backup will be off to the Premier League. He joins Crystal Palace on a free. If we want to go ahead and pull off any significant deals this window, we're going to have to sell off a player and the chosen sacrificial lamb is Renato Sanchez. Golden boy of 2016. He's actually headed back to the homeland and returning to his boyhood club Benfica for 38.4 million pounds. It's come to that stage where we have so much midfield depth right now. He's just surplus to requirements. Fabian Ruiz will be traded to PSV as we've negotiated a deal back for Xavi Simmons. Yes, he's a channel legend. You all know that, but he was let go by PSG. He's now balling out in the Eredivisie. And actually, in real life, Fabrizio Romano's reported they only have a £6 million pound buyback fee. It can actually be activated any time in July, so you could see this move go down in real life this year. And keep in mind, we're only three seasons deep. We confirmed a deal with the youngster. £20 million pounds plus Ruiz headed the other way. He can act as a backup winger on either flank. He can be a quality playmaker in the middle of the park. He's come back with some unfinished business. He's got to finish what he started. £6 million pounds in real life is an absolute bargain, and we've had to sacrifice 20 mil plus a player. We were on Struggle Street trying to secure a quality first team centre back on our type of budget. We were scrambling for pennies under the couch. We got the signature of the German international Antonio Rudiger for one last dance. He's in his 30s now. We needed a bit of experience in the back line and just an extra centre half. You know, when it's an extremely specific fee, we've negotiated tooth and nail with Ancelotti for this one. We snagged him for a bargain price, £4 million under his valuation. A quality addition to the side. He wants to run it back in Paris and, you know, a little bit of experience in the side never hurt anyone. We were fighting for our lives to get this deal over the line. Now, the lads were on point domestically. Picture perfect in France. Let's see if they can replicate last season and go even further in the Champions League. As Kangan Lee keeps his starting spot on the left, Xavi Simmons replaces Vitinha at the cam spot. We've dropped him back right next to Bernardo Silva, his countryman, as Ugarte joins in on the bench just like Rudiger. That's how Enrique is in Invincible PSG are rolling out for season three. Let's see if these lot are mentality monsters that can do it all over again. Come to face reality, I know it's routine for them to win the league untitled every season, but back to back champions, and they nearly went two seasons in a row undefeated. Now that would have been an unprecedented.
unprecedented feat, but they finished with a higher points tally than last time out. 105 points, literally unfazed, unchallenged at the top. I just wish this league was just a little bit more competitive, you know. There's a reason why they're called the Farmers League, and in the Trophy de Champions, it was a 4-1 win against bitter rivals Marseille. And the domestic treble was in fact captured, locked and loaded, as it was a dominant 3-0 display in the Coupe Nationale against Angers in the big dance. It's all about the Champions League with this club. How close did they come this season? They actually went undefeated in the group stage, finishing on top with 14 points. And over in the round of 16, they progressed past Manchester City, which is a statement win, 6-3 on aggregate. And then over in the quarterfinals, Juventus knocked them down a peg again. It's a humbling crashing down to reality with a 4-3 aggregate loss. The wheels just started to fall off at the Parc des Princes. They actually went on to win the whole thing. Who would have thought the old lady, the Bianconeri, becoming our arch nemesis three years deep into this rebuild? Could that be a sackable offence? I mean, a domestic treble, it feels very been there, done that. And Luis Enrique is attempting to live up to all expectations as at Trafe Kimi, he's a 4D chess master. And not only that, he is a baller on the pitch as well with 35 goals and 19 assists from the former right back. We've completely transformed his career, converting him from a right wing back to a right winger. 54 goal contributions in 53 appearances. And when it comes to our attacking options, we've got the likes of this Openda Wahi strike duo. Almost 60 goals between them and the new boy, only one of two new signings this summer. It was Xavi Simmons upon his return, got double figures in both departments. The Dutchman growing a plus five, entering that world-class territory and Kangen Lee. He's grinding in the background, being a quiet achiever. 12 goals and 15 assists for the Korean on the left and Bernardo Silva the minus one, but he still managed eight goals and 19 assists for the captain. Another player who's hit the 30s and is starting to deteriorate. It's Marquinhos, the former captain. One goal and 15 assists from centre-back, which is crazy to think about. And now scrolling towards our man in between the sticks. He's still only 27. Don Naruma feels like he's been around for ages, but 32 clean sheets. Even got himself a cheeky assist in the mix. The Parisian Giants have one final task left to complete, and that's Champions League success. For the first time in this club's history, this team won it back in blood. They are fueled by revenge. After two back-to-back -back eliminations from Juve, they're putting all their eggs into one basket. Season four, they won it all. Hear me out. Whoever's involved, whoever's behind I'm the financial team here at the club. I just want to talk. 18 million pounds. Like, this is just, uh, this is just slap in the face. No reward whatsoever for back-to-back -back domestic trebles. That's not even seen as a major success here at PSG. I feel like starting a GoFundMe right now. The PSG war chest. Donate now if you want to see any transfers. Holy, just bring back the request funds feature, dare I say. As we've agreed a deal with Leeds United for the sale of Mitchutz, who's come back from his loan spell at Galatasaray. 18 million pounds on the dot and it's back-to-back -back sales right now and Negera will be permanently making a move away to Blackburn. The 24-year-old striker nowhere near our first team makes the move to England for 4.7 million. We've been forced into this position, the clearance sale is here and honestly, realistically, these lads aren't getting any first team minutes. One of the last players I was willing to let go of and cash in on was one of these no-face players who's been loaned out a bunch of times, really has no business being on our roster. It is Ayman Gardi, another departure out to England. This time, Bristol City pick him up for 7.6 mil. Another cam, another midfielder, another swap deal. Things are getting out of hand, BCHD. But when you're working with absolute pennies, being known as one of the richest clubs in the world, being funded by you know, an entire country, it's kind of laughable how we only have minimal funds in the bank. We've had to weave our way through this transfer market. We have involved Carlos Soler, who's getting on a bit. He's hitting 30 this season. We are getting in a Spanish sign for Luis Enrique, it is Oihan Sunset arriving from Milan and the cash involved 3.45 million pounds. The reason why I gave it the green light is not because he was a cam, is that it can be a fourth choice option at striker. A super sub attacking option in off the bench. The Basque boy from Bilbao, it's an Enrique signing if I've ever seen one. We're feeling a little bit light on quality and depth on the right hand side. So our second buy of the window, it was going to be a Brazilian from Old Trafford. We gave United our Brazilian. Neymar is still rocking it there at the Red Devils and this time we have gone after Anthony. We've brought him along to be a backup, a, you know, rotational option on the right just in case Sakimi gets hurt or gets suspended. And we've included the former Olympic Lyon Academy player Bradley Barcola plus eight million pounds in the deal to get this one over the line. A handy little pocket rocket to come in off the bench. Got his game face scan now in career mode so it was just a no-brainer. He's about to approach his prime.
Prime, and that Brazil flag PSG club logo combination is just iconic. Who wouldn't want to join this winning project? Yeah, we left it late, and what of it? Why is Bernardo Silva in a Chelsea jersey? Nonetheless, here is our Champions League group. We had a few sales to make, if you will. We had to make profits as the Champions League group. See, I've never heard of that club, but that's a pretty tricky group, if you ask me. We haven't left any stone unturned, and going into season four, our business has dwindled our squad size down to 27 on the roster. And Ugarte now involved in the first team 11, partnering up with Vitinha in midfield. And we've given the ex Lamasia Youth Academy graduate, Javi Simmons, the captain's armband. Let's get simulating to find out what 2027 has in store for us. Get the bail at the ready, load up the tapas, because Enrique Ball has got us eating good. Here in season four, it's a three-peat league tour, but not only that, they've done two seasons invincible. Only four draws, getting that 106 points tally. It's just unprecedented stuff. They're winning league titles in their sleep and relentlessly as well. And again, Paris FC, rock bottom of the ladder. You love to see it as the Trophy de Champions was claimed a 2-0 win against Lyon. And the quadruple, ladies and gentlemen, is well and truly on because the Coupe Nationale final up against Mets is happening after the good old Champions League final. They made it to the big dance. It's a battle for the Holy Grail in 2027. It's a 2020 final replay with Bayern Munich v PSG going head to head, but how did they get there? They ended up top in Group C undefeated with 14 points, just like last time out over in the round of 16, getting the better of Man City again with a 5-3 aggregate win and a high scoring affair. Talking about goals galore, they fought their demons, got rid of the past enemies Juventus, knocking them out 6-4 on aggregate, getting the job done away from home and against Real Madrid against all odds despite losing the second leg. They sent the Galacticos packing with a 4-3 aggregate win and in the third classic or other semi-final, Bayern Munich got the better of BVB and here we are. There's a potential quadruple here on the line, people. That's how much is at stake. And if you're wondering what a 28-year-old Mbappe's been up to this entire time, yeah, he's spending his prime out in the free agents, not playing any football, no clubs picked him up. He sent him out to the streets with no mercy and he never found a new home. I bet he sat at home crying on the couch watching us win W after W, trophy after trophy. Hold your horses though, it's not all sunshine and roses because Manuel Ugarte's picked up a suspension and Hakimi's injured for tonight. Two first team heroes that are barred from playing. You can't have it all people. Well, that's football at the end of the day as our top goal scorer was the always reliable Louis Appenda. The Belgian is ruthless. He's got goal scoring in his DNA with 38 goals and this combination, this strike duo, it's borderline French magic. The Champs-Élysées won't be forgetting them anytime soon as at Traffic Kimi who's had to get another spellbinding campaign. 33 goal contributions has picked up an MCL injury. He's out. He's had a long term injury at the back end of the season. In his prime it's sad to see but Xavi Simmons is back getting double figures in both departments. Actually the only player to achieve that this season. 15 goals and 18 assists for the Dutchman. Bernardo Silva who's going to have to fill in for Ugarte tonight. 12 goals and 8 assists. Kangan Lee dialed back his production this time around. 5 Five goals and seven. Vitinha putting in a good shift in the middle of the park. And Marquinhos again, who loves an assist. The Brazilian pulling the strings from the three men back line. Actually, our best playmaker has come out of nowhere. Nuno Mendes, who might have taken over that left wing spot from Kangan Lee. 37 assists. We have found a winning formula, and we're about to get lost in the source as Gianluigi Donnarumma got an astonishing 34 clean sheets. And financially, our highest valued asset is Xavi Simmons. He ends off season four with a 95 million pound price tag. I'm counting our lucky stars because I'm glad we invested in a backup right winger. Anthony will be replacing Hakimi on the right, but other than that, it's pretty much our first choice starting 11. We don't want there to be a kick clash, so both clubs are going to be battling it out in their brand new away jerseys. That's how Bayern Munich are potentially lining up. Got to be cautious with these Germans. 2020 is still fresh in the minds of the PSG. All their fans crying like Neymar did at the full-time whistle. And tonight, is their moment for redemption. They've got the Marquinhos Tifo, an icon of the Parc des Princes. And that man, Xavi Simmons, with his sideshow Bob S. Care style, will be leading the boys out tonight. Luis Enrique, he's been there, done that with Barcelona in 2015, winning the treble. Now he's going to tactically go out at this PSG new era to lift the ultimate glory without Mbappe, without Neymar. It has been a roller coaster ride, but here we go. Bayern Munich get us underway. And he's got options in the middle here. The captain finds Wahi. 
and why he spreads it out wide to Vitinho. We've got options, and Openda with a lovely over-the-top through ball to Kangan Lee, and the Korean cuts inside the box, gets around his man, and Openda was there, and Manuel Neuer winding back the clock with that save. And Enrique doesn't know how it's not 1-0. Why he gets pushed off the ball, and now Bernardo Silva can cut back inside, trying to find that crossing option. And Xavi Simmons there again, trying to pick out a man in the middle. And it's Luis Apendo with his 39th goal of the season. Read him and weep, boys. The Belgian heavy hitter is wearing retro boots, but it was his head that got us the first goal. He's thinking with the right head tonight. And our number 11 was in the right place at the right time. Getting in between the two bind defenders, the golden delivery from Xavi Simmons himself. And that is his 14th goal in the Champions League. He's coming for that Ronaldo goal-scoring record. They've gotten the better of Kimpempe, Mazraoui. They've got their own Moroccan right back in their side. And Muziala finds Satriano, Donnarumma had to get there at the near post. And that was their reply. In the starter from day one, being a menace in this Champions League final. And it's back possession again. Bernardo Silva finds Anthony, and all of a sudden it's Wahir involved. And how did Noya save that? Putting the pressure on, making himself big, and that should have definitely been 2 0. And Appenda causing havoc again. It's Xavi Simmons now all alone. Denied. Xavi Simmons, Noya again. Bayern Munich just over committing at the moment. It's Xavi Simmons finds Appenda again, and Wahir in the clear. Wahir completely smashes that one home. It's 2 0 PSG. And we are walking all over the Bavarians tonight. Showing no remorse, Enrique Ball, the way PSG are playing, it's absolutely irresistible right now. Xavi Simmons, that strike combo, and the absolute rocket launched by Wahi. Call up Elon Musk, because we're going to have a space adventure coming out soon. Wahi, now Anthony can just run with it, and look at the pace on him. He can't beat out Davies, and he does. Now the goal scorer in that final, a former PSG player from their academy, and he wants to do the same here in 2027. Seven years later, he passes it through to Goretzka. Goretzka Ooh. finds... Satriano in the middle, Donnarumma off his line, and it's going to be ruled out for offside. Nabry thought he halved the deficit right before half time, but it wasn't to be. And Alano comes to our rescue. It was the slimmest of margins, but thankfully, no goal. Ooh, playing with fire at the back here. Satriano all alone, and that one was easy for Donnarumma. It is not over yet. We do not let this slip. We go into the halftime sheds 2-0 to the good. I hope they're not celebrating too early in Paris, because there is still a second 45 to go. Here we go again. Coman, the former PSG player, wants to ensure that we don't win, and what a save from Donnarumma at his near post. That's what a 92 rare to keeper gets you. And it's Leroy Sane on Fenabri. A quick change from Bayern there. Cuts Back to Sane. Kimmich finds Satriano and why is no one marking Muziala who just had to roll it into the back of the net. They don't pick the ball out but they've gotten themselves a lifeline and the German who has been the architect of all their attacks. Don Naruma came out but it was too little too late. Game on. I trapped them. What the hell was that? Vitinha just fell on the floor. As a penned up back inside, we've got numbers on the left-hand flank. Vitinha finds Kangen Lee in this Bayern Munich defense, dropping back against all odds. It is the Korean who whips the ball inside. Anthony's there on the volley. He was brave enough to get the shot away, and Neuer has to put it out for a corner. Here we go. Let's swing it in with Xavi Simmons again in the header. Neuer keeping his side in it. How many saves is this man going to pull off? And look at the way we build from the back. Having our options on the left, pretty much our most dangerous side and Kangen Lee still got a bunch of energy to go. The Korean now looking for options on the inside. It's a pender again and the rush shot wasn't good enough. We want to end it fair and square. We don't want to force it into extra time. And Xavi Simmons, Vitinha from nope. long range. And Neuer has to touch it onto the bar. We can just wind down the clock but Anthony brings it back. Finds Xavi Simmons again with a beautiful through ball. And the Dutchman cuts back. He gets taken out. And Davies is being naughty all night. That might be full time. Referee, blow your whistle. Two minutes of added time. And that will be that. It was looking like it was going to be an absolute whitewash. The floodgates opened early. It was an early 2-0 lead. Both our strikers on the score sheet tonight. They'll be happy with themselves. But if it wasn't for some manual Neuer master strokes, it could have been five. It could have been six. Nevertheless, a win is a win. It had to be done. And a canon event has been achieved. PSG. 
PSG. Eventually, they won the Champions League. It's taken them till 2027. The Qatari investment was cut back and dialed back. And the way we've been treated by the financial team, it's like we've had to do this on hard mode. But Luis Enrique has been nothing but professional on the pitch and off it. Get the party started. That's mission accomplished. But wait a minute, people. We've still got a quadruple to go ahead and chase. Don't go anywhere. The Champions League's all fine and dandy, but if we don't go ahead and win the quadruple, four trophies in one season, was it all really worth it? It's just the way the scheduling works. For some reason, the French Cup always has to be the final game of the season, even after the Champions League final. And we're battling for our fourth piece of silverware in front of our own home fans at the Parc des Princes. It's all going down in the Coupe Nationale. Ugarte back in the starting 11. And there we have it, a comprehensive 3-1 victory. Appenda got his 40th goal of the season. Xavi Simmons was there to make it to an Oli Sunset off the bench. It's a quad, baby. I don't care what the news title says. Luis Enrique's 1-4. It's the perfect send-off. Now they can officially celebrate. And it led us to two comprehensive victories in a row. They've only gone and done it. And if you've made it this far, make sure to drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe. Turn on the notifications if you want more career mode content coming at you this summer. Make sure to leave your suggestions. Leave me your thoughts down below. I do go ahead and read every single comment. Whether you comment L or unrealistic, I will see it all. As always, my social links are listed down in the description below. Make sure to follow me on all my socials. Ring the notification bell, all that good stuff. And as always, I've been Sir BCHD. That's been Luis Narique at PSG. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.